If there is one place that can be more terrifying than the deepest levels of Torghast, it is the darkest depths of LFG. It can seem impossible at times to break out of LFG and find solid partners, but a lot of times people are approaching Group Finder from the wrong perspective. The metacomps that work at the highest levels don't always work well in LFG, and sometimes you spend forever setting up a meta team just to get into a single game where your partners rage quit over problems caused by no communication. But have no fear. Just like your character was able to break out of the maw, you too can break out of LFG. There is a better approach to queuing group finder, so stick around as we show you how to navigate the LFG system and give you the best specs for solo queuing arena. Starting off, let's discuss some basic facts about LFG. Rating and skill level vary greatly, but the average rating in Group Finder seems to be about 1600. The highest teams you will find are generally around 2200, but on rare occasions you can find teams at Gladiator level using Group Finder. Your goal when using Group Finder is to find partners that you can queue with regularly. If you want to achieve Gladiator rating and above, you should try and find a consistent team to queue with. Because of this, you should try and be a bit selective with partners. Ideally, you should try and find a team queuing around above your current rating. You don't want to queue too far above your comfort zone, but you should always aim within 100 points of your current rating or MMR. One thing you should look out for is whether or not people are being honest about their accomplishments. Someone might say they are 2200 experienced, but it often does not matter if it was from earlier expansions. When you're looking for partners, always check their armory to see their current rating and achievements. Before we check out the LFG tier list, we wanted to let you know that we have a full library of instructional content at skillcaps.com slash wow. We have the best players in the world working hard to deliver the highest quality instructional content to you, so you certainly don't want to miss it. Our guides cover every single class and focus on developing your skills in arena. Whether you're grinding rating in LFG or queuing organized arena games, there is content for everyone. If you're interested in taking your gameplay to the next level, make sure to check out our detailed class guides at skillcaps.com slash wow. It's time to look at the tier list for melee specs, but first let's go over some criteria of what makes a spec good in Arena Group Finder. You might be asking yourself, isn't the tier list for LFG going to be the same as normal Arena? Well, there are certainly a lot of similarities, but solo queuing presents some unique challenges that we will have to consider. One of the best ways to win an arena game is to reduce your opponent's hit points to zero. There are some specs that can do this by themselves and other specs that need a lot of handholding along the way. For a melee to be good in LFG, it must be capable of scoring a kill by itself, or at least doing enough pressure by itself to eventually land a kill. Because there isn't reliable communication in Group Finder, you can't rely on complicated kill setups and cross CC. You simply need to be able to do the highest damage possible with the least amount of setup. On the defensive end, a spec can do well in LFG if it can survive by itself. The more forum posts about a class's healing, the better it probably is in Group Finder. The best melee specs in LFG have powerful defensive options for both themselves and their teammates. In S tier, we of course have Red Paladin, standing alone as the only melee in S tier, as it goes far above and beyond all of the criteria we have for a melee. On the offensive side, no single melee DPS can end the game faster than a Red Paladin. Wings and Divine Toll can be enough to take out opponents by themselves without relying on support from their teammates. On the defensive end, Red Paladins are defensive machines for their entire team. They have a wide range of defensive options with Blessing of Protection, Blessing of Sacrifice, and Blessing of Sanctuary, and they can carry their team with some of the strongest heals of any DPS class. This allows them to cover a lot of mistakes that happen in LFG situations. They can fix problems created by bad communication by just overwhelming the opponents with defensive options and healing. On top of that, Red Paladin has very flexible comp choices and works well with pretty much every spec in the game, including other red paladins. Leaping into A tier are arms warriors. While arms warriors can't top their teammates in a single global like red paladins, they can easily prevent their team from getting low in the first place with countless tools to disrupt the enemy. Abilities like intervene, disarm, war banner, and rallying cry can prolong games and keep their team alive while providing consistent pressure with mortal strike. Venthyr warriors can deal a ton of damage and they pair well with tons of classes, giving them lots of comp options. Windwalker punches its spot on the A tier due to its insane offensive options and defensive toolkit. Their offensive CDs are some of the strongest in the game, and they can execute their kill setups on their own. They have a great defensive toolkit for surviving the early game with Karma, Fortifying Brew, and Diffuse, preventing early kills due to lack of communication. Finally, they have decent crowd control for setting up kills and supporting their teammates with peels. 
Following up Windwalker is Enhancement Shaman. Shamans have amazing burst damage during their offensive cooldowns and can end games on their own. On top of that, they have some of the best off healing of any hybrid in the game, giving them room to support their teammates. Their team utility is powerful as well, having access to Grounding Totem and Tremor Totem to counter CC. Pharaohs might not have 9 lives but they do have a lot of healing, which is enough to put them as the last A tier on this list. Pharaohs also have insane crowd control options that can be used to set up kills and peel for their partners. The B tier includes melee specs that can do well in LFG but need some hand holding along the way. Starting off this section is Survival Hunter. This spec has really good sustained damage but often relies on other classes for setting up kills. Because of this, it is really restricted in comp options and is almost forced to play with a Red Paladin or Feral Druid. Both Frost and Unholy DKs are next on the B tier, mostly due to their limited comp options. Their offensive toolkit is strong, but they are pretty much forced to play a meta comp like Windwalker DK. Because of the lack of off healing with this comp, DKs can struggle in longer games where more sustained defensive options are necessary. Frost is the most popular spec for DKs, but it relies heavily on consistently setting up kills with your team with a death grip, AoE stun, and kill streak, which is hard to pull off in LFG, a place where people sometimes don't even know what a death knight is. Finally, let's move on to the C tier. These specs might do well in normal competitive arena, but have some crucial flaws that make them struggle in group finder. Unfortunately, rogues have vanished from their normal A tier and find themselves all the way in the LFG C tier. All three specs of rogues struggle in LFG due to their fragility and their reliance on other classes for kill setups. Rogue especially struggles in group finder because they need really good communication with their partners, which are usually mages, in order to land kills. Their weak passive survivability also makes them weak to other melee classes, specifically warriors, and so they often struggle to survive by themselves. Just like rogues, demon hunters also struggle in LFG because of their fragility and lack of versatile offensive options. They tend to die really quickly outside of their limited defensive CDs and they are not very threatening outside of the hunt. These weak defenses and limited solo offensive options make rogues and demon hunters less suitable for LFG solo queuing. Just like melee specs, our tier list for casters is based on how well a spec can do by itself, both offensively and defensively, specifically focusing on how well it does while being trained. If the spec can carry a team on its back, either through insane burst damage or endless control and defensives, it's probably a good option for solo queue. If it falls over easily and struggles to output damage without support, it's likely not going to work out well in LFG. Starting off S tier is Balance Druid. If there's one thing not balanced about this spec, it is their damage with Incarn and Convoke. Balance Druids have some of the most broken burst damage out of any caster and has reliable crowd control for healers every minute with Root Beam, allowing them to set up kills without relying on their partners. Finally, this spec is incredibly tanky and can survive on its own with just Bark Skin and Frenzied Regeneration. For all of these reasons, Balance Druid is a lot like Red Paladin in LFG. It is able to kill and survive on its own and works well with pretty much any other spec in the game. There used to be more mage specs viable for LFG solo queue, but they all got vaporized by combustion. Because combustion is so strong and so easy to execute, fire mages can often score kills on their own, even without consistent CC on healers. When they're able to CC, they have lots of options with both Frost Nova against melee and Dragon's Breath Polymorph on healers. They are also surprisingly tanky due to the Trion Ward legendary and abilities like Alter Time and Cauterize. This toolkit makes them very difficult to kill even without coordinated defense of usage. Finding itself forever alone on the A tier is Elemental Shaman. This spec has some of the highest burst damage in the game if allowed to free cast, but it struggles to put out pressure if trained all game. They're relatively tanky and can passively avoid a lot of damage by kiting. Their off healing is decent and they offer a lot of utility for their team. Just like their survival counterparts, Beast Mastery and Marksmanship Hunters struggle a bit in LFG. Both of these specs have consistent CC for healers, but they often rely on their DPS partner, usually a Ret or Feral, to do high damage during traps. These specs are also relatively frail when trained and require competent partners to keep them alive. Standing in the shadows of their organized arena greatness are Shadow Priests. They have strong CC options and can carry the game if left alone, but have limited pressure when trained. They are really fragile DPS and are incredibly susceptible to getting overwhelmed by melee cleaves. Their CC options are good, but often require coordination with partners in order to be truly effective. 
Starting off the C tier are Mushrooms, and by Mushrooms, we mean Warlocks. Every spec of this class can do well in Organized Arena, but is really limited by the lack of coordination and communication in LFG. They're incredibly vulnerable to getting shut down by melee DPS, which often forces them to give up pressure and kite using their mobility options. On top of that, their defensive cooldowns are very limited, and inexperienced players might find it difficult to both survive and deal damage while getting trained. Finally, in the pile of ashes left by their god tier counterpart are the remaining two mage specs. Both frost and arcane mages can deal a lot of bursts, but it is more demanding to execute than their fire counterpart. On top of that, their control options are comparably weaker to fire. Without dragon's breath, it is difficult for them to land polymorph onto healers without coordinated team effort. Moving on to healers, the two main criteria for tier list placement are how well a spec can keep its partners alive and how well the spec can survive on its own when there is limited communication available. An S tier healer is like a self-driving car, fast, responsive, and with a few important safety features for your team. It has powerful defensive cooldowns and doesn't need to be told what to do. Remember being stuck in a video game as a kid and thinking, there's absolutely no way I can kill this boss. Well now you get to have the same experience as an adult every time you queue into Holy Paladins. They have some of the best defensive cooldowns in the game and can keep their team alive through any amount of damage due to abilities like Blessing of Sacrifice and Blessing of Protection. Their wide range of defensive cooldowns allows them to consistently save their teammates, even if their partners misuse their defensive options. They can survive while being trained thanks to immunities to damage like Divine Shield and their mobility options, and they can avoid interrupts better than any other healer due to their two aura masteries. If that wasn't enough, they have decent damage and can support their team with surprisingly strong judgment attacks. An additional consideration for the strength of healers in LFG is how well they can just sit in the back and spam heals. Shamans are great at performing this role because they have really strong healing output while being extremely mana efficient. Just like Paladins, they have a few panic holds that can prevent their team from dying, and they are even able to support kills with strong lava burst damage. Their main downside is that they can struggle with getting trained, so sometimes they need the support of their teammates in order to stay alive. Healers on the B tier can be strong in organized arena, but the lack of communication and coordination can hold them back in LFG. While they might be more balanced than balanced druid, resto druids unfortunately fall on the B tier of this list. Their overall healing output is good, but they lack powerful damage mitigation cooldowns to save their partners. They also struggle at playing defensively and can easily fall behind if they're not constantly cycloning enemy DPS and contributing to kills. Because healers in LFG often benefit from playing defensive, resto druids fall behind shamans and holy paladins in this format. Just like resto druids, priests need to contribute to offensive plays in order to secure kills. They have wicked strong offensive options, but it often requires precise coordination with their teammates and a PhD in physics, which isn't always available in LFG. They can also be easily trained by melee DPS, limiting their offensive options greatly and making them very reliant on their partners. Finally, their mana management is difficult if they're forced to play passively, making it unlikely that their team will survive in longer games. And if mana management and getting trained was ever a problem, Mistweaver monks definitely experience it in LFG. It should be said that Mistweaver does have strong offensive CCs and a good defensive with Life Cocoon, but their lack of mana efficiency and the tendency to die quickly in stuns makes them suboptimal for LFG queuing. And there you have it. We know that LFG can be a grind for some players, but it doesn't have to be. If you go in with the right knowledge about the strength of classes in LFG, you can find an organized arena team to push Gladiator. It may be a long journey, but we will be there on every step of the way. Make sure to give us a like and subscribe with notifications to get instant access to some of the best instructional content available. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.